Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Nope. Yep. <laughs> there was a uh, moment where my brain just quit working. Just lag. <laughs> it happens. Uh, it happens. Too bad we're oh, coming back anyway. <laughs> yep. We're back. We're right back at it. Uh, welcome back to the second half of Ye Old Gut Punch R. Not Ye Old. I don't know why I said that. Gut Punch now. RP's <laughs> Yield Fractured Peninsula. Uh, this is our first episode, and so far. The party has met in a tavern. We I love bet. a good trope. <laughs> exactly. You gotta get back to it. Uh, so, yeah, we are just going to start from there. We are all currently sitting uh, at a scrub table in a dark, smoky tavern uh, that uh, has okay stew and really good beer. Are you gonna finish that your stew? Your stew, um, gloves. Are you gonna? Are you gloves ready? will slide their plate over. Shoot a thumbs up. Thank you. And then just oh wow, this is a lot better. Uh, do you do you need a, a hold? Hold on, hold on, and like like. I'm just gonna like druid craft a couple vegetables and fruits for you, just to like, give you a little bit, some, give you some <laughs> more nutrition. I mean, well, well, this I, does this I, does balance the meal, but like, I don't know if you've noticed, but like, I do need a lot of protein in order to like maintain my 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 body and whatnot. <laughs> and whatever you need, whatever you need. That's I mean, I just offered. That's all. But but thank you, I will eat it, and just like takes one of the peppers and takes <laughs> a huge bite out of it whole and delicious little peppers and something like a strawberry. <laughs> so it's really good strawberry. Is Liz who you wanted us to meet, Gloves? Is this the news? <sighs> and oh, we're, Gloves we're, will. Were you all already? I mean, I mean, I guess I kind of just like walked in here, and you were already meeting here. Of course, you already had business. Never mind. That's, never mind. Uh, so, hi, my name's Lizareth. What's your name? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I, I'm Maury, and I'll extend extend a hand for a handshake. It is the limpest handshake you have ever experienced. <laughs> like, <laughs> eagerly grips, like, kind of, almost like pulls you a little bit. <laughs> just, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, oh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Your hand and then, is now gripped as uh, <laughs> gloves begins. Yeah, gloves will dig around in uh, their uh, side bag and pull out and flatten out the piece of paper for primarily for uh, their two friends to to see it. But also, you know, if if the others want to look as well, that's fine. Uh, again, the paper is describing. Uh... It's just handwritten. It's kind of how the guild, you know, does things when it's a job coming from somewhere higher up. Uh, it just describes that there is a one-way boat uh, going to Mordania, and it's leaving in a couple days. Uh, the details are vague. Payment is promised. It's also probably real dangerous when there's no name and a presumably high amount of payment attached. So that looks sketchy. The gold looks nice, the travel's nice, but what what would we have to do? Do we do we just show up? Oh, are you all planning to to go and do this? Cause that doesn't look like a good idea to me. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I've also never been on a boat or done anything like that. So maybe it'll be fine. But it's it just kind of seems a little off. I could be wrong, but I mean, a one way boat, line of right? Work, yep. In my line of work, a little off is the best you can really hope for. But you're not wrong. <laughs> Are y'all planning ways to get money? Yes. Mm -hmm. Kinda, I guess. I mean, I, I sort I of don't, have a job, but it doesn't pay great. I I don't I don't if know all, really. if you want any help or would would like it, but um, I 
I just move like I just moved to the city to try to get money so that I can send it back to my family um, on the farm. The farm's not doing so well. You know, mom, mom, and pa are getting older in age, and the, me and the older siblings, we decided that you know that it'd be best if they stayed. You know, little Chuck and and and, and I, I, I'll I'll get their names memorized eventually. Um, <laughs> Uh, speaking of someone with and, five siblings, no, you won't. <laughs> and, yeah, look, little Chuck and Christina, they we they, we all decided that it'd be best if they they stayed and, and took care of the tech, took care of the farm. But then I went out and like tried to find money and send it back because we still got the three little ones. There's two, the two twins. Um, there, there's Celine and Landon, and then there's the little baby Elise. She's not a baby anymore. She's about eight years old now. Um, but but yeah, that's a lot of mouths to feed, and so you know, plus plus plus, you know, what with the taxes going up and and whatnot, we we just the times are getting a little hard. And there was that drought a couple of years. We still kind of haven't recovered from that one. But you know, uh, gloves is gonna shoot a look <laughs> over terrain, and just sort of like, in 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 the most in just the blackest way possible, which is sort of like. <laughs> like raise an amused eyebrow at just how long she can go just uninterrupted. <laughs> like and so I decided I'd come to the family and to go go to the to, to town um but you know I figured that there's some work for a paladin and I could probably make a good paladin so I was going to come and see if like maybe the temples needed some oh, some guards and stuff but I haven't decided you, uh... which no I haven't decided yet um Ma used to like she would uh, she she's a big follower of Salune and I thought that'd be cool because maybe I'd like to fight some werewolves but you know um my fr new friend Triss over here says that tomorrow would be a really good god so I'm I'm kind of thinking maybe that'd be a good way, but I have considered that Tyr and or Torm would be pretty good, and Lathander's a pretty good one as well. But I just I really haven't decided yet. I'm I'm still kind of playing it out because I want to keep my options open. Um, but but yeah. Well, what are your qualifications if you would like to do adventuring? I can carry a lot of things. Oh my gosh, Rain! She can carry things. <laughs> this may be perfect. I can't carry shit. I don't. I can birth the calf. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that could be useful. We'll put that in the maybe. In the maybe. Like, maybe column. When that could come in uh, handy. I don't know. Um. Ma Ma taught me how to make the contagious accent. God damn it. <laughs> I, um, uh, uh, mom, Ma taught me how to make healing potions. I can do that. It'll take me, it takes me a little bit, but I, I can do that. Um, if, but. if you ever need ingredients, I, I grow them for potions and stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's, I've got that's my own willow tree and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like willow trees. They're fun. I like how the, the little and, and, things hang down. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, the bark is like one of the main ingredients for healing potions and stuff too. It's pretty useful. That's at least, true. The, at least for the recipe that my boss uses. I don't know if there are different versions of it, but Ma gave me Anyways. this herbal herbalism kit. Um, so I've I've got that to travel with, and you know the the twins gave me this lucky rabbit's foot. Um, I I mean, I guess on the I don't know. If, you all overheard what Rolf was telling me about, but there was some some plants that he was hoping that I could go and look for and said he would pay me to do it, but I don't know if it's the kind of trip that I want to do by myself. It would probably be a few days hike. I don't know. Is Would, would that job that Rolf proposed, is that essentially like the opposite direction of the job that I was given, or would they coincide in any way? Uh, they are pretty much opposite directions. One is going inland, and the other one is pretty much hopping on a boat and cooting south. Hmm. Rain, what do you think? How long... How long was the boat trip? Uh, the boat trip uh, would probably I mean 
You're not really 100% sure what all is going to happen on this boat trip. If you just sail straight south, it probably would be, like, less than a week to get to the coast of the southern continent. Right, I mean, it said, it said what location the boat was heading into, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a big continent, though, so it's a pretty vague, like, you know, we're going to the USA. Presumably, there there would be a contact in the docks when we got there. I would assume is how that would work. Uh, the uh, also, the other thing to note about that one is there's there's no return trip guaranteed for us. We have to get ourselves back here. Yeah, it is the ship heading in a, in the direction that Rain does not want to go. Uh, it is going in the opposite direction of that. You would be further away because you're going south. I mean, like, the trip inland also goes away, but it is over land, and in theory, you're coming back. In theory. I don't know what you guys are up to. And how hard could it be to get a return ticket back? I mean, you just have to go get a boat and then get passage and we make plenty of money. So we just have to buy that back. And I'm sure there'd be no hassle in us getting to come back home. Mm. I mean, I don't know. Mm. Mm. I, I mean, I don't know what you all are planning in terms of like going on a getting on a ship and going on some adventure but I I I don't know I if I get fired then I'm screwed <laughs> so I can't lose my job unless Maury <laughs> Maury listen to me listen to me huh? what if we get to be really famous adventurers and then you just make so much money you won't have to work at the shop but, but what about my garden I mean, could you, like, what if you made enough money to get your own house and make your own garden that you wouldn't have to share unless you wanted to? And then you could decide who you share it with. Now that would be really nice. That would be really nice. Besides, that crotchety old man is prickly, but he wouldn't let any of the plants die. He wouldn't let them die he's not he, he doesn't have much of a green thumb himself but he wouldn't let him die that's true <laughs> they wouldn't flourish but I guess they would survive why not which would happen no matter what I guess if he would have to take care of those plants while I'm gone no matter what I guess why not take a, a sample of, of each one for your own garden for when we get there oh I have those <laughs> oh, I have a whole pouch of like, like, like seeds and everything. I, I like, I keep like seeds dried. Like, I like, like he'll, like actually, like, well, because <laughs> he definitely still has his like apron on. Like, he just completely forgot to like take off like his garden tool belt as he ran out the door. Like, like there's definitely just some like, like reaches into a pocket and just pulls out some like loose seeds that have yet to be dried out properly. And like, I, I, I'm well, I mean these ones aren't ready yet, but like I feel like a whole collection of them, like. And she just like kind of put that away again and brush up his hands. It sounds like you're set if you were to ever yeah. step away. I guess that's true. If we It'll help nice you get away for a few days <laughs> with your job, we might be able to get you back fast enough so you don't have to worry about it. Did you all do that? Sure. Of course. I mean, I guess it just meant you, but do do you do you want a thing to do? I w I would like to make some money. I that... be a paying gig is what he said, pointing towards the bar. And he's clearly like listening to every word you're saying. He's trying to be like nonchalant about it, but he just kind of like shifty eyes when you point at him. 
I also I know you can hear everything we're saying, too. bud. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd appreciate it. I'll, I'll throw in, like, a keg of beer. What about some more stew? I'll throw in a keg of stew. We don't need a whole keg. We don't need it. We don't need it. I, I don't need it. That's, that's okay. I don't need it. We don't need it. But it, it unless sounds you like... want it, Liz. Unless unless you want it. I mean, I wouldn't turn it down. I mean, All we right. can work it out on the stew. Uh, but you guys are taking the job. You're gonna. I. Yeah. Yeah. Say it with confidence, Maury. Believe yeah. in yourself. Yeah. Excellent. And he uh, sort of, he pulls out like a piece of paper that's very grungy and has sort of like cramped writing on it and is like rereading sort of like what he had in this. I guess it's a note. It's a mix of like common and elvish and also like a little bit of thieves can't. There's a lot going on here. Uh, and he's just kind of reading over it for a second. He goes, oh, that's fucking nothing. Uh, well, I can get you guys like a little donkey and a cart because I guess you're going to be carrying some stuff back. It's about like, well, I mean, I've never made the trip. We'll have to double check the miles. We'll get the per diem down. I gotta talk to I gotta talk to Greg one more time, but uh, maybe you all just come back in the morning and we'll send you off then, and then I'll have all the information because you know Greg's supposed to come over later and we're supposed to hang out, but like it's getting it's getting to closing anyway. So who's Greg? He's my my buddy Greg. He I mean he's like a he's. A jack of all trades, let's say, but he's. I he's thought a cool you said guy. his name was Greg. He's a jack of all. That jack of all trades is just a. It's just an expression. It's um, just a turn of phrase. Yeah, he's. Uh, he's like he's. Why, a lot. why are so many people calling people names by the not when it's not their names? That kid called oh. me Mark. Now you're calling Greg Jack, and I just don't understand. Is this are a you, city folk thing? I. Are, Oh. Maybe. Um, I don't. Well, I any... don't think so. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Maury's questioning everything now. Like... Greg is my business partner. We'll get it worked out. We'll get your money and your upfront pay and your per diem, and then you'll go get some lovely flowers that are absolutely a hundred percent legal to transport. Bring them back here, and I will turn them into something less than legal. And he kind of like looks at both the uh cleric and this person who looks vaguely like a guard as he says that and he leans into more and just goes they're not fucking cops though right they better not be otherwise i'm in trouble all right as long as we're in trouble together all right yeah no yeah. see y'all see y'all like uh 10 30 let's call it you know don't like to don't like to morning too early. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, any more beers? Uh, more stew? I'll get you. I'll get you some stew for the room. Unless I you need like more stew. You look like someone who also might need like a room. Do you got room needs? Anyone? Uh, we got two rooms upstairs. Uh, real nice. No bugs at all. No, no takers. Oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, I don't have to the group like I don't have money and I don't have anywhere to stay. Right. That's yes. And I will gloves will pay for the the room as well as I mean, the stew. You could also, I mean like yeah. if you want to crash on my couch, there's that. It's not great. There's it's not very big. You might not fit, but it it's free. I You're don't know. Awesome. Welcome I to mean, crash at the Temple of Timora. That might be more comfortable. And you can go through and see if it's a god to your liking and check it off and see the pros and cons and add it to your list. I'm assuming you're going to have to do a lot of research studying. 
I... And that's also probably more of like an actual sleeping space. My place is really just a corner of the basement. It's not really an actual apartment or anything. Not up to code. I, I think I think I will. Uh, I, I, I very much appreciate the offer, Maury. I, I think I'll take the the. the I symbol. understand. Um, because I I I don't do well on couches. I I mean, I, and at that point, I would rather just sleep on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, nope, I understand. You made the right choice. All right, uh, you are able to finish up uh, your stews. They do get you like a uh, large, like a salad serving, but like table family style salad serving bowl of the stew and a oversized spoon for you to take with you to wherever you're going. Uh, and the bartender just goes, I do want that back though. Uh, I made it. Oh, uh, of, <laughs> of course. Oh, wait, you made this? That's impressive. Oh, yeah, I got like a, a spinning thing in the back for, you know, my woodworkings and my... Oh, you do woodworking? I whittle a little bit. Uh, I, that was the gateway. Whittling was definitely the gateway to uh, the woodworking. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll pull out this like little, um, little uh, charm that is a, um, a, a little duck that she has whittled. Does it look uh, like a duck? It it, it looks like a duck okay. and it quacks like a duck. <laughs> it might be enchanted at that point. <laughs> Just uh, saying. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Just sort of like nods and goes. Nice work as he's sort of like also clearly uh, kind of chiding you all out of his bar, uh, there is at that point like a knock at the, at some back door that you can't see. Uh, and you just hear the voice of like someone who's been in the kitchen this whole time go, Greg! <laughs> <laughs> it clearly let someone in. Uh, but yeah, you are all turned out for the night from this bar with weird hours. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get Gloves' attention and tap them about the note from the guild. Mm. Do we need to meet the contact for this tonight? Or do, should we do this tomorrow? Because how many days is it gonna be before the ship takes off? I will check the paper for any of that information. Uh, you know this is a... the sort of... When it is just written like this, you have to go see a higher up to get all the information. And it's kind of also one of those things where before you get the whole story, you are already like on board, like you're locked in. Gotcha. So like they could leave tomorrow. They could leave in two weeks. You'd have to talk to someone to find out. I can talk to someone before the night's over and let you know what I know by the morning. Would you be able to find out without being locked in? Would I? Yes. And Gloves will they give like like just a small smile. The money is great, but it's not a motivator for me. But I know that Trish really wants an adventure, but it sounds too dangerous. I mean, the sickly one did have a good point. Mori, right? <laughs> Even for the guild, this is a little scarce on the information. I'll make a judgment call. Also, don't worry. If we went anywhere else, I'd make proper stew. That wasn't <laughs> very good. Yeah, I didn't eat anything. And uh, gloves will dig around in their snack pack because there's no way someone says that and then walks away without food in their hands. Uh, and I'll make they'll produce like a little packet of three sugar cookies that have like um, caramel lines sort of drizzled across the top of all of them. Go. 
made them yesterday, so they should still be pretty fresh. Even if they weren't fresh, I'd still devour these. Thank you. <laughs> you guys will put the hood up and disappear. After like 10 minutes later, when Triss realizes Gloves is no longer there, like into the night. Good night, Gloves. See you later. <laughs> yeah, you've been like walking for a while. You're like, oh, I thought they were right behind me. They uh, heard you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, Mori, you, you just kind of go like around the corner and down a little yeah. bit on the main road. And uh, Mori's apartment is fully, is legit, is just a corner of like, basement underneath the shop like yeah. it's just yeah they put up walls but they're like yep. the slats it's like enough touch. space for like a bed and maybe and like a desk and that's it yeah this Perfect. is an adult man <laughs> who lives this way just a little guy uh so yeah you he's like your... 24 it's fine <laughs> it's fine that he lives this way it's fine i feel like there's a long game there uh <laughs> Yeah, is there anything you do as you find your way home? Anything you need to do last minute this evening? Not in the evening, in the morning. Or I will have something, but... Alright. Uh, so then we will follow our three headed back down the opposite way, going past all of the different uh, shrines and churches as they go through, you know, the temple district. Tress is definitely doing, like, a, like... The tour of someone who's lived there and knows all the places, but also very Hollywood style of like, and in this mansion, we have the Church of Saloon and like goes through like all the dirty business of the acolytes who live there that she knows of and like not touching on any of the actual God stuff. It's just the the people she knows and what they're up to. Are there any werewolf hunters? Because I know that that Saloon is um, is is known her worship. Her followers are known to like hunt were werewolves. Oh yeah, definitely. They stop by all the time. They usually don't stay here for very long unless they're recovering, or if you know, like a long-standing injury, and then they stick around for a bit longer. But yeah, there's definitely werewolf hunters. They come by. Oh, that's cool. Uh huh. Tell me about Tamora. Uh, Tamora, she is great. She is the goddess of good fortune and those who want to pursue their dreams and long for adventure and are willing to put in the work to go search and claim for what they want to get. And th her followers are bold and they trust in their own luck. And she aids the daring, the people who go out and seek the adventure. Is that why you keep wanting to go on an adventure? Yes, yes, that is exactly why I want to keep going on an adventure. It makes no sense that I am a cleric of a deity who tells you to go out and search for your own destiny and search for your your future, and I'm here. Well, then why haven't you just gone on an adventure? Because I have to work the temple. Someone has to give the prayers and like bless other people for their adventures. And I'm the only one kind of left there. Everyone else is kind of off adventuring. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of ironic, isn't it? A little bit. Did I use that word correctly? I think I've heard Christina say it. <laughs> I think you did. I, I, I think... So. It's when you want a spoon, but all you have are knives. So I think that you used would it be right. unfortunate because, like, you need, especially if you have stew. Um, yeah, because you, you do need spoons to to eat. That just seems like a really bad time, really. But Which I is guess what's going on right now? That maybe it's like rain on your wedding day. God, <laughs> did you call? I would definitely want rain on my wedding day. So yes, that would be ironic. <laughs> this is the conversation. This is the fall yeah, the entire is... trek home. This is what's going on. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that. <laughs> and you so are... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, if you have more, you keep going. 
Don't challenge her. Do not challenge yeah. her. What's it? What's it like living in the city? I mean, like it's great, I guess. There's always lots of people coming and going. It's really loud. There's lots of smells. There's always things to do. There's lots of temples. There's lots of shopkeeps. Lots of things to buy. I don't, I don't, I don't know. What's it like living in the country? It's a bit, it's a bit calmer. Uh, people don't generally take take your money. Um, you know, there's animals, lots of animals, and you know, lo lots of lots of work that has to get done. You have to get up real early and go and like tend to the animals and make sure that all the crops are doing okay and whatnot and then you know you come back in you eat and then you go back and you, eat, you you do more work and then you come back and you eat and you do more work and okay so we have a few more things to do than that and there are animals if you really want to see animals but it, you kind of gotta be quick if you want to see them because they they're like they like to hide and then run quickly because they don't like being spotted and they really don't like you touching them Animals tend to lack me. Oh, okay. Well, maybe Gloves can show you some of the, like, he's that got a really great way with some of the local rats. And they're really friendly, but they kind of only really to them. Um, I mean, there's a really angry cat that lives around the temple area. As you're saying not... that, just like <laughs> down a little alley, you hear that. They're watching. Move quicker! <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. No! <laughs> <laughs> Not again! <laughs> keep keep the track on. Going to the temple. <laughs> yep, and you are able to. There's a like a moon, with a fairly full moon with clouds sort of rapidly moving across it. So it gives you like good enough light without having to resort to a torch or magic uh, to walk the fairly steep trail that winds through the hill and down to the uh, front of your temple. And you are able to set yourselves up for the evening. And we will go over. Unless anything you guys needed to do at the temple before you go to bed. Nope. Just kind of give the very short tour and find a room for Liz and yeah. We will go over to uh, Gloves, who we find back walking through the alleys down towards uh, the uh, port, kind of heading to the south a little bit to the corner where uh, the Open Hand uh, Guild makes its general home. Uh, you are... They have... I guess you'd call it a guild hall. It's kind of like a room in the back of a warehouse that they have, and it's open all the time. There is a guard standing outside the door, a uh, sort of skinny uh, tabaxi named Talus, uh, who is wearing like dark colors and just sort of like flipping a coin over his like little short round uh, fingers with long claws at the end of them. Sort of wave. Uh, um, you go ahead. I was I was just gonna uh, ask if Talus is the type of person who would know uh, some more information about uh, this job. While Talus is uh, higher ranking than you, this is like a more important guard job. Uh, he would probably not know something like this because it just is above a lot of the guild's pay grade. Uh, but he will just sort of, like, do a <clears throat> a quick little knock on the door next to him, and it'll open for you, and he'll kind of uh, continue just flipping the coin and nod you yeah. inside. <clears throat> yeah, and um, Gloves will just go through, um, just making, like, a pretty much a beeline straight towards the, the quote-unquote office of uh, uh, the person who would have the information I'm looking for. Uh, and as a note, while in here, Gloves actually does not speak at all um, and just 
uh, essentially does sign language using thieves can like just quick hand signals to communicate uh, anything that they might have to say to someone in here. All right. Uh, and you are able to go. Oh, there's like a desk slash like bank head in the back corner uh, where there is a uh, sort of live half elf uh, woman who you know to be named Era, sort of like uh, that like wood elf green brown skin with like curly hair tied back uh, and just wearing like simple leathers uh, and is taking notes or doing numbers in a small notebook in front of her and looks up and just sort of nods to you and speaks out loud uh, just asking what can I do for you it's a little late isn't it uh, gloves pull out the flyer hold it up Ooh. And they sort of reach out and take it out of your hand. And, like, there's a little brazier next to them, and they just sort of toss it into there uh, as, you know, housekeeping. It flares up, and they sort of watch it catch fire. I... I'm going to start by saying this isn't the type of job anyone in this guild usually takes. It's a little... You know, it'll be a little more cutthroat than what we normally do. And that's not just a pun about how they'll be on the water. One of the pirate merchants seems to be packing up shop and heading for the southern continent. I can't say what he's doing. I can't say even which one of them it is. They're pulling real tight about this, and it's making all the guilds, even the ones who do more business with them, nervous. The pale mm. bee. Not, I don't think enough. They're being sketchy on that, and it might also just be something where not everyone makes it all the way. And Gloves will sign and say, Well, you accepted the quest, so what's the the contract at the very least? So what's why is there any interest at that point? Um, she sort of <clears throat> sighs heavily, leans back. We might not do a lot of business with them, but you don't insult pirates. Just sound judgment. If you want to see the contract that badly, you can see um, it. I was more just looking for information on it. Um, and Gloves will sort of like pause, hands in the air, just like thinking and going. And then we'll continue to sign and say, how much time do I have? I might need to help someone with something first. And she sort of like goes and it's like, you know, if you're in the guild and you're in here enough, it's kind of sort of like known secret that there's like a safe under the floor, but she goes and she opens it and um, <clears throat> pulls out an incredibly tightly furled uh, like vellum piece of paper, like very expensive stuff and written in like a very, very, very fine hand. Uh, it is just... 500 gold per sailor. Wanted for one way trip to Mordania. Unsigned. Just that is absolutely all the more information they are giving you. Uh, they are saying uh, that the sale date, it's dated at the top. It mm -hmm. came in yesterday in a much different hand. Like someone wrote that it came in yesterday on here. And the uh, at the bottom, it says, leaving within seven days, more information to follow. Gotcha. And knowing how far north I would have to go before the ship sails south, would that time frame, how, how well do those two things line up? Uh, it's kind of one or the other. Yeah. 
kind of no way to make it work. Um, all right. In which case, Gloves will sign to, um, what, what was this person's name again? Uh, Era. Yeah. Um, Gloves will sign to Era and say, I can let you know by end of day tomorrow. Uh, and like, this is someone who's known you for like a lot of your life mm -hmm. and, uh, kind of just for half a second, a very like concerned look passes over her face. She goes, it's your call, but this might be a fool's errand. She sort of turns around and just like rolls it back up and like drops it in the safe and kicks it shut. Um, while her back is turned, I want to slide of hand some food onto her desk because <laughs> I feel like she probably hasn't eaten. Uh, I mean, she's fairly tired and not really expecting you to do anything, so it's very easy for you to just awesome. reach into your pouch real quick and produce something for her to find in a moment. Yeah, and I'll disappear like Batman before she turns back around. Yeah, she sort of sighs and does the thing where she like leans back in this chair and then starts turning it around and goes, every fucking time. Ooh. And starts eating like the food that she notices. And yeah, you now know about this contract. Uh, is there anything else you are looking to do this evening? Uh, not ri Yes, there is. Uh -oh. I want to take um, uh, the the flagons of that to-go beer that I got. Um, and I'm also taking some white wine, various herbs, a couple onions, um, and some homemade seafood stock that I've made. I'm going to make uh, not not a stew, but a bouillabaisse using the the Sword Coast seafood that comes fresh out of the water around this place. And I'll have that simmering all night. All right. Uh, yes, you spend uh, a good 45 minutes, uh, you know, prepping all your ingredients and getting them all ready, uh, combining them and getting the fire just right. And as the flames sort of simmer down uh, to that lovely, like, reddish glow, you just sort of start to drift off a little bit. Happens a lot. <laughs> People find gloves asleep in the kitchen very often. Yeah. And for all of you, morning comes and the bustle of the city begins uh, way out on the coast. It's just been the constant sound of the waves crashing. Uh, and if you're not used to it, uh, like Liss is not, it there's a point where you're like, oh, wow, that is loud as hell. What time? 4 a.m.? Oh, my God. Uh, luckily, you're a farm girl and a little bit used to that. So you all can wake up in your own time and reconvene or do morning things. I know, Maury, you had a morning thing. Yeah, I, I, I have a boss to answer to. <laughs> uh, yeah, you... <laughs> Someone else who I likes have a to wake up. At, boss. Yeah, <laughs> someone else who likes to wake up at 4 a.m. and who lives like upstairs above the shop uh -huh. is Mr. Howie Mankin, who you hear clomping around like the little kitchen that's down next to his office. Uh, for so somehow he has like an espresso machine that's just screaming in there, and uh, then you hear like him plop the, the down kind in of, his chair. I feel like he's the kind of old man who doesn't need a ton of sleep anymore. No, like, not at all. he's up at all kinds of weird hours. <laughs> like, yeah. Then well, he starts his, like, weird old man morning cough, and you're like, this is... Uh, morning, boss. <sighs> <laughs> Little sip of his coffee. Well, right you're... There? Yeah, well... I mean, all right as I can ever be. Uh, what what brings you up here so early? Uh, well, um, I, I was already awake. Uh, um, <laughs> but uh, I actually I, I wanted to talk to you about something. Now, um, I know we're we're a little short-handed lately, but um, ever since 
you know. But, um, uh, I actually got uh, asked to do a little job for, uh, you know, uh, you know, Rolf, the, the guy at, at the Drunken Monk who I sell the, who I grow the hops for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he asked me if I could, like, there's uh, some specific ingredients for a new brew he wants to try, and, like, I, and, and I was thinking, like, just to kind of keep that, that, that customer and business person relationship strong, uh, that I should really yeah, look, try to do this for him, right? Look, look, like, look, I know, I know what Ralph is up to. He's not discreet. No, not what, really. What's what's the ask? What are you trying to get out of here? Uh, he he wants me to get some flowers for him out from there's like a, a druid grove a little bit more inland. I got some there's some friends who'd come with to make sure that I don't die along the way. Yeah, because I'm saying if you go more than like two miles, you'll probably just drop dead. Yeah, probably. Well. But I. But but I got some some friends to help. So uh so I, I would I would at least have company and I wouldn't I'd I'd be coming back. It, it probably wouldn't be too long. I'd like like for a few days probably. It was like it's it's uh, Ralph was saying it was a bit of a trek to get out there, a bit of a hike. But uh but it shouldn't be too long that I would be gone. And he sort of just once again sits back in his chair, like takes a sip of his coffee, and sort of has like this. I start making, I start, like, like I, like, like I, if, if he has, like, breakfast on the stove or something, I start tending to it to make, like, trying to, doing anything to, like, get in his good graces right now. Uh, like, it, he has, like, oatmeal, but it's, like, you know, how old people just make the wateriest oatmeal in the world somehow. It's, like, one of those, and you, you know, just kind of, like, look at it. I, I go and it stir it. Once, uh -huh. and it's, it's gonna be, like, 45 minutes before that shit's done. Uh, kind of. <laughs> craft a little bit try and like try and try and like find like try and do something to like kind of suck some of the moisture out a little bit to kind of spur it along like you kind of like put a druid crafted root in there and then just pull it out real quick without like with my back like putting myself between like the stove and you have a lightly cooked man. druid crafted root it's just Great. a little parsnippy Great. looking thing now Great. that's okay <laughs> that's okay it's soaked just some of the water and then i'll just like put like tuck that up my you... sleeve don't like, stop touching my goddamn huh? food. Oh, sorry, turn. sorry, sorry. I was just checking on it. it I... Looks like it's pretty close to done. No bullshit, me kid. Here's uh -huh. what I'm saying. Yeah. You can go out. You can have your little adventure. Uh huh. And when you get stabbed, I'm not gonna get I'll stabbed. See, uh, you'll probably get stabbed. Maybe. Uh, I'll see you back here. And then I'm taking a fucking vacation, all right? Understood. Also, as long as you're out here bargaining and making deals, go get me, like, a pony keg of uh, the, the beer and bring it here. Just, like, a little one. As part right. of, you know, he wants you to go do uh, a job for him. Mr. I run a tavern that's totally not a front can give me... Yeah, totally not. Totally not. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, a little so, bit better with the front business if he really wanted to make it. Whatever. He really uh, could, but as long as I get some beer and yeah. some peace and goddamn quiet out of it. Go ahead. I don't say another word. I just give him a thumbs up and I go <laughs> out the door. It's like back out silently. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he just, you hear his yep. chair creak and like a long slurp of the coffee cup. As you also I'm... hear just the boiling over of the oatmeal on the stove. Yup. Yup. Every goddamn morning. Okay. <laughs> and God, I'm gonna have to clean like a week's worth of crap off of that thing when I get back. Okay. And I go, I go to check on my garden for a little bit before I go to meet the others. Lovely dew-covered leaves, the morning glories that you have in your garden are open and facing the sun as the first bees of the morning are buzzing around tranquilly. Oh, hey, little guys. Hey. Just bouncing into stuff, doing bee things. You're 
check the hummingbird feeders, make sure that they've got everything they need. I'll check the check the check the bird see the bird feeders, make sure that like the squirrels haven't gotten into them too much. Oh, they have. Um, it's everywhere. All right, guys, come on. <laughs> like, there's some like there's like a couple rats like who are down on the ground who like are taking stuff and leaving. Like, uh, I see you. If you like, I, I leave stuff for you. <laughs> This is for the birds. Let them have it. Okay. All right. Whatever. And <laughs> get back to it. So you enjoy your few moments of peace in your garden this morning. As we go out to the temple on the beach. Tris, what's happening? What's up? After the very quick morning chores that she kind of sprints through. She kind of sits there very forlornly in the main part of the temple waiting for visitors to come that will not be coming. <laughs> Once Which again, part of her the door slams as... Jolts up. <laughs> as Corva again walks oh. in. Visible disappointment. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just a really heavy door. Just, are you going somewhere? Yes, I am hoping to, and I'm pretty certain, and I'm almost positive, but I think we found a quest. Well, kind of helping a friend out out of town to make sure he doesn't die, because let's be honest, he's probably gonna die when he gets to the outskirts of town. But it could be a quest. I mean, at least sounds like a good starter quest. Yeah, and I'll get to bring back some gold and go explore some things and do some adventure and, you know, invoke some luck. <laughs> let's... let's gotta be partly a quest, right? It's gotta be a pre-qualifier, maybe? Yeah, and uh, this, like, uh, you know, late teenage, like, waif of a human uh, sort of, like, looks a little misty-eyed about it and goes, One day I'll go on a quest. And you will! I believe in you! But I really need you to stay home to help take care of this stuff while I'm gone. And maybe when I come back, we can trade out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I have so much to learn, too. I mean... Eventually, if I make enough of these potions, I'll know how to... I'll stay here. <laughs> she just kind of, like, nods and, like... Just kind of gently, like, claps her hands. Like, I believe in you, you can do it, and cast guidance on her. <laughs> for whatever little task she's going to do in the next ten minutes. <laughs> Blessings of tomorrow upon you, and she also casts guidance on you, and she, like, backs away awkwardly again. And we'll go off to, like, you know make a uh, tea for your great aunt and like there are two other acolytes at the temple it won't fall apart it'll be fine yeah well, as the time gets close just grab my travel bag and like yell into the interior of the temple i'm like great aunt i'm leaving and then go off to go find rain and liz <laughs> good luck the, the new girl told me is <laughs> like she was like trying to walk out of the room to say bye to you and you're just like out the door yeah <laughs> yeah go quick scurry around the whole temple see if I can figure out where Liz is held up and then I'm assuming rain is on the beach so save that one for last yeah I mean uh, you could easily find Liz I feel like probably has not gone too far Yeah, you'll, uh... <laughs> Although... Could I have found the great aunt? Oh, no! <laughs> and be sitting and listening to stories? Uh, yeah, as you yell. <laughs> so, yes, you are sitting, you got up early, the waves woke you up, uh, and you kind of... I did did uh, about like a hundred push-ups, you know, because I'm not I'm not at the farm anymore. Gotta like gotta keep yeah, fit. Gotta keep and, it together for sure. And... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you are doing push-ups like in the foyer, just like out in the middle of this uh, temple hall, just like counting. And at some point, like the door off to the side, uh, just sort of like slams open, and. Uh, surprising amount of like strength behind the slam for this old woman who walks out who while tall sort of just has a lot of the marks of age 
Who is out here counting? <laughs> oh, I, I, I am. I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, uh, uh, my, my name's Lizareth. Lizareth hum, Humblegrain. Um, I, I, uh, your, uh, um, Tris. End of the story. End of the story now. Tr no, uh, Tris offered me a place to stay. I'm new to town. To I haven't decided what what god i'm gonna uh, uh, what god i'm gonna pledge to um but but she she said that tomorrow would be a good one for me to consider and so i thought i'd come here but then the waves were crashing i couldn't i couldn't sleep because i'm i'm not used to being this close to the thing so so then i started like doing some of my my morning workouts to keep myself fit because I'm, I'm not on the farm anymore and so there's no bales of hay for me to carry around and whatnot and so the <laughs> Yes, ma'am. For the love of God, go get me a cup of tea if you're going to tell me all of this. Kitchen is that way. She points very vaguely, like, off to the side. Uh, but she's also very much not asking a question. Like, this is her <laughs> temple, and you're going to go get her some tea. Y yes, ma'am. <laughs> and she just kind of goes back into her room, and you just sort of uh, see, like, a little bit of light sort of come out of her room obviously she doesn't need it but she is just like casting something like dancing light somewhere so that she has light for when you bring her her tea and you come back with this tray that you found and this tea that you made and she's it's sitting way oversteeped just bags are still in there like she takes a sip and just goes, well, better than nothing. And you two just kind of start like talking around and at each other, but like stories upon stories of like when I was a girl and you just go, oh yeah, back in my, when I was on the farm. Uh, <laughs> and that is kind of, you're midway through a story when you hear that door slam and you hear a little bit of talking, and then you just hear the yell of "Good boy, I go. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I've got I gotta go. I think that was Tris. Uh, I'm supposed to be helping her or in some some of her friends, so I, I apologize. Thank you for your hospitality. I really do appreciate it, but I better go. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of you just go out the door, and she's also up trying to like say goodbye to Tris, but you are both like at the threshold, making your way. Grabs Liz's hands and just, like, takes off towards the beach. No, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> where, where, where are we going to? We have to go find yep. rain before we can go. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see rain when I was up, so yeah. First rain? She's on the beach, come on! And rain, mm. skirt, skirt, they skirt, run skirt. down like 200 stairs. You hear us Are you very audibly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clank, no. clank, yeah. clank, <laughs> clank. Yeah, I'm on the beach. Just looking north, sort of feeling this like water sitting in your chest as you hear crushing rocks and metal just grinding into things behind you. Uh, and Ray, Tris and Liz. Are you ready for an adventure? <laughs> Seems you're finally awake. I, I got there eventually. I wake up. That's true, you do wake up. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come You're on, ready. come on grabs your hand too. Back up off. the 200 <laughs> stairs. Waves crashing behind you. Heavy backpacks on your back. Just really feeling it already today. Uh, and then you walk the half mile back to town and up the winding road that is uh, the temple district. And you find yourselves once more in front of the Drunken Monk Inn. Check to Do you see. think they'll have more stew? Oh god. He always has stew. If he's open, he has stew. And I'm gonna, like, peer in through the window. Is it open? Like, 
I'm assuming this is the place where the hours are just weird and you never know if it's open until you get there. Uh, surprisingly, when you look through the window of the door, it just kind of opens, like... Perfect Seems timing. like they're having an early morning. <laughs> Swing the door open. Walk on in. Oh. Is, it, is it being a slightly yeah. hot box? Uh, <laughs> there is a distinct, like, heady smell in the air. Um, there is also the distinct smell of bacon. And some sort of carb situation. Like, it's just a very breakfasty scent in the air. Yep, I definitely stride towards the bacon smell. <laughs> Uh, and you have uh, still just Rolf at the bar, sort of like pouring beer and coffee. Uh, and like, oh, so you, you guys want breakfast then? I can. Get yes, it please, fired Rolf. Up for you. Okay, so uh, will it be all. T how many of you were here yesterday? Ooh, good point. Yeah, how about. Uh, right. Should be five. Uh, all right, we'll make sure we got enough. And kind Thank of you. like he leaves just buffet style the beers and coffees on the bar and just kind of like shuffles back into the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen itself seems like a uh, less hot boxed right now, but they're sleeping we'll it see off. It's early in the day. <laughs> exactly. We're going to um, end it with infused breakfast. Okay. <laughs> just a little. It's just for fun. Uh, and at that point, uh, I mean, Maury, are you walking on in now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like he's got a like a big pack, also, along with like, like one of those like 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 a Samwise Gamgee level like backpacking <laughs> pack that definitely definitely looks too big for him to be carrying, and like, Mari! I think, and like <laughs> like you know like the water bottle holder on the back of a backpack. Mm. In that little thing, there's like a little terracotta pot <laughs> with a little seedling. Like one that he like didn't trust his boss to actually take care of, like a little like a stubborn one that's yeah. just like okay if, if I if a... I don't take care of it then it's just gonna die. So that is in the little cup holder on his backpack as he walks yeah. in. It's one. It has the one leaf thing going on right now, but that leaf has beautiful variegation on it, and it's just yeah. kind of swaying happily as you kind of hop along. I I, I don't know. I, I haven't figured out exactly what kind of plant it is yet, but, but, but once it sprouts a little bit more, I'll be able to figure it out. <laughs> Alright, so you all, you four are now uh, all in here high-fiving like you just met back up at summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> Gloves, is there anything you needed to do before you join this, uh, this situation? Uh, I just, in the morning before I left, I filled five thermoses full of bully base. Or, wait, that's not true. I actually am carrying a small basket that has um, five bread bowls inside of it. And as I arrive <clears throat> at the uh, the uh, drunken monk, I will sort of sit down and raise a basket and go lunch. And you guys have like all of this breakfast in front of you and I'm sure Liz's eyes just light up as you see lunch is also covered. Does anybody want my coffee? Ma, Ma said I, I should not drink coffee. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> I'll, take it. I'll take it, please. <laughs> she she said that I don't need any help with being awake and and being lively. And that I do, I very much do. <laughs> Gratefully take the coffee. Pa says I turn into a demon with it, so. Oh my God. <laughs> That's good information. We could use that. <laughs> I don't think it was literal. No. I mean, I can, like, I can make coffee beans and like the druid crafts like a couple like like unroasted coffee beans in his yeah. hand and just tucks them in his pocket. <laughs> if he's uh, doing that like all day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Make one cup. Gloves <laughs> will. Trip, man. Let's go. <laughs> Gloves will then relay the the uh, more robust version of the contract um, and will emphasize the part where it it seems like we're going to have to pick one um, and we'll end on a note of I've known Era for a while most of my life and 
She's never really been concerned to send me on a job, so if we want to avoid the more dangerous one, that's fair. And I guess we already agreed to the inland one. Well, we can always find another boat job another time. It's true. I've Funny never people. been on a boat. Neither have I. Same. Grew up by the water my whole life and never been on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> Lived in the city right. whole life too, yeah. So I want to do gloves. Um, well, I would be a little worried to send you all off without me, so we can go find special flowers. Besides, I have to hear your thoughts on the Bulia base. <laughs> on the what? Oh, it's going to be amazing. Gloves makes the best food. So, you make food? <laughs> I cook occasionally. <laughs> This fully in character, the coffee comes out Maury's nose. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I love food. I I could tell. <laughs> it's like a handful of bacon. Uh, yeah, and as you guys like finish up breakfast, you have a basic amount of supplies. If there's anything else you want, you can pretty much find it. Otherwise, you can start heading inland and they do give you like a map uh, that has there's not a lot of roads so it's like go along this road until you get to this and then like watch out for this mm -hmm. uh, okay I, I, I know that landmark at least yeah yeah I mean yeah. I haven't gone quite that far inland before but I'm sure I'll be fine yeah, I'll be fine yeah you can you can I'll read a map generally and it's somewhere between two lakes looks like there's maybe a town near it it's circled the circling's a little imprecise uh you were given like a coin with the instructions uh to give it to the bartender in the town that they have circled uh and he will be able to direct you to the shop they were a little unclear on details he will direct you to someone else who will get you these plants. Uh, but, you know, he also sends you on the way with uh, 10 gold apiece and a solid uh, per diem, uh, which is... For a second, it gives you pause because he's giving you 25 gold and you're trying to do math of how long it's going to take you to get there. Mm-hmm. And it might be a bit longer than a few days. Mm. And you're kind of oh, trying to look to get the get map and like do some math, then you're like, maybe close to Fortnite? Hey, Ralph, buddy, you're, if we end up out here longer than this per diem that, that you've generously given us already, uh, but I mean, if we end up, if, it, if this whole journey which looks to be pretty long takes longer than what you planned you're gonna pay us the rest of the per diem yeah when we get back well i mean you guys are gonna be staying at like four four star michelin hotels like that should be that should be plenty but yeah 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 you bring back receipts and i'll reimburse you for the extra but but as long as we're at it you know keep receipts for that just in case uh you're under and i should inventory it. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna try to you ain't gonna try to swindle us, are you, bud? Yeah, I, the one trusted. I'm doing some good work for you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I've done some good work for you. Uh, and yeah, I'm just yeah, we should, a know. little a little trust and understanding, man. All right, all right. Insight I'm... check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I help Ray and just like Four. give her guidance? <laughs> like, <laughs> sure, you can have the guidance. On. Add a D four. I know this guy. That doesn't mean I trust him. Mm -hmm. Like, fair. Actually, like I know this guy, so therefore I don't trust him. Really, is more what it's like. I'm just like full on sprawl, leaning on to Rain <laughs> and just like giving guidance every few. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just constantly casting guidance. <laughs> like, oh god. 
spamming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, what'd we get on uh, our insights? 17. Whew. Okay. 19. Nice. Okay. Uh, Maury, he is genuinely a little bit affronted that you think uh, he would swindle you okay. because he's always been upfront. You know, he doesn't cut the product. He gives you the good shit. Uh, you guys talk plants. He thought you were plant buddies. And now this That's is how true. you treat him <laughs> in his own place of business. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I'll just... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I think I'm 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 just a little on edge. It was a rough morning with with the boss man. Is I'm sorry. I I shouldn't have I, I shouldn't have done that to you. That's that's my bad. It's cool. No no worries. Just I trust you. Do good business and, and yeah yeah. And he like sort of sticks out his hand to just like shake hands with you and kind of like put it right yeah. and he sort yeah. of like. Pulls it back when it's a little weak hand. She goes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I want to thank you. I'll I'll check check in with the old man. Make sure he's not. Well, he'll, he'll survive if nothing else. <laughs> I'll look in on the plants. Is what I'll say. You know. Thank you. Just, thank yeah. You. I know he's yeah. not great with them. No, uh, he's not. <laughs> I mean, most of them will do okay just with like whatever rain happens, but like there's a few that's, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I know, you, you know the whole deal. Yeah. It's like, rest of you, I appreciate it. I don't let Maury die, especially talking to you, and he just points that list. <laughs> like, just watch everyone's back, all right? I mean, wouldn't it be beneficial if I watched all of them and not just their backs? Oh. And then I... uh, he just turns and looks at gloves and goes, that one will step directly on a trap. Watch out. <laughs> Goodbye, Raul. Take care of yourself. We've known each other like three kids. He just like goes into the back and just like you hear like uh, something light. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely done with y'all. <laughs> See you when we get back. Bye. My boss wants a little cake when I get back. Bye. Oh. Full Midwestern welcome, one-sided way. <laughs> yeah, and, and like he like no. yells something in the affirmative, and he'll probably like. Run down in a couple days, bring the keg, and like check on the plants or something. Cool. But he's got you. You've got your uh, marching orders, as it were. It's a lovely day, a little breezy, uh, but sunny and nice enough. Perfect day for travel. And you have a donkey with a tiny two wheeled cart. It's like a mini donkey. Amazing. Smelly. Like I don't have that spell yet. Or I didn't prep it. Damn it. <laughs> Mini donkey the spell? Oh, I just I, I, I can't remember what level, what level spell speak with animals is. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Lord in heaven, please don't. Uh, <laughs> you got me as a druid now. <laughs> oh no, I've got to cope with the donkey personality. All right. Scratches uh, for the donkey. Yeah, I'm talking to all of the animals as soon as I can. <laughs> But yeah, you have this cart. It has like, you know, a barrel of water in it and a couple other supplies that he's just like throwing out because once you get past stuff, it is quite a ways between towns and there will be camping and all of that. But uh, you are able to take this so far very cooperative donkey out the front gates and into the rolling fields of Istavar. And you walk for a while. And a while longer. And a while longer. And the houses kind of give way to a little bit more open farmland. And there's more livestock uh, and bigger livestock, more cows and stuff. Uh, but you know, just as people who live in uh, the port nearby, that it is safe for about 20 miles for the most part. And then it gives way a little bit to banditry and lawlessness is what people say, but also everyone who 
lives in town has never been this far out of town, and every step they take is a little bit further from the place they've known their whole lives. If I take one more step, <laughs> we'll be yeah. the furthest away from home I've ever been. Yeah. Just I'm already the furthest. <laughs> Yeah, you're going back towards your house pretty much. You're like, oh, okay. I guess we'll pass through. Um, but yeah, and you are able to walk unbothered through the day. Uh, and it starts to get a little bit towards evening. And it's easy enough to find a place to camp. And now you all are on an adventure. The first adventure for many of you. For some of you, maybe the most far-flung adventure, but we will put a pin in that there as we uh, have people settle in for the evening and we'll pick up next time on Fractured Peninsula. Hey. Ba -ba -ba. Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and hanging out. And thank you, players, as always, uh, for, you know, playing the game with me. Uh, we are here live on Twitch uh, and we'll be, be we'll be back another every other Friday soon. If you are on YouTube, we'll see you next week. Very, if that's how it works, uh, please. Uh, Donate to our uh, charity, which this month is this month. I'm going to change it every time. Doctors Without Borders. Every dollar you uh, enter or every dollar you donate gets you an entry to win a sweet, sweet ass little swamp gas balloon. Not this one, one that's in a box. Uh, and, you know, uh, you can have a whole balloon adventure. Otherwise, let's all go around and say our handles, where you can find us, what we are up to, if we are up to anything. Uh, we'll start with, we'll go from the bottom, we'll start with Nat. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hello! Hi, I'm Natalie, uh, Shield Maiden, or Shield Maiden Cosplay across all platforms. That's Shield spelled with two eyes. Uh, mostly you can find me on Instagram. I'm working on a lot of cosplay stuff right now, uh, getting ready for C2E2, so you can keep an eye on my progress there. All right, uh, and then I realized that the screens aren't the same, so we'll go to uh, D next. Oh, hello, my lovely creatures of the dark. My name is D. I'm a voice actor, streamer, musician, professional GM all across the interwebs. This is actually my first actual play of the year. Um, so if you want to know what I'm going to get up to for the rest of the year, you should follow me on the dying, flailing site known as Twitter. Um, for as however long it lasts. I'm also on Blue Sky under the same handle, at It's De Riddler. Thank you so much for joining me. You can catch me over on my stream, Spreading Democracy, because I've been <laughs> loving Helldivers too. And if I made you hungry, that means I win. That's the goal. Every episode for Gloves. And that's me. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will then go to... Uh, we'll go to uh, Dr. Psycho. That's me. Hi, I'm Jess or Jessica. Uh, you can call me or you can find me on the things and the stuff as uh, Dr. Psychal, except for on Twitter where I am Dr. Psychal TV. Uh, I pretty much uh, just work, but I am working on some cosplay things. So also getting ready for C2E2, not competing stuff, but uh, I, I will be and again stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I will be there as everyone's favorite bear daddy, Halson. Um, oh, hell yeah! <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's me. All right, and then it is going to be a wreck. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wreck1568 on all the stuff and things, including Blue Sky, and uh, I'm a professional thrower. Don't do anything right now. Just been, just been doing a lot of work and planning a vacation. <laughs> and yeah, you definitely won because I've been snacking this whole time. Please, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, then we will go to Bodoni. Hi, I'm Bodoni, Italic or cosplay, depending on where you find me, but I'm across 
a lot of the things. I know, mostly Instagram and now Blue Sky. So I'm not really posting anything, but hopefully to get back into some projects here coming up. But I will also be at C2E2, most likely in Old Cod's place. So yay, Bethany. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, that's me. I am Kyola Creative. I have been your GM this evening. Uh, thank you for tuning in. You can find me also on mostly just Twitter yelling about stuff. But yeah, that's what we have for you this evening. Thank you once, right? Thank you once again for tuning in. Are we raiding someone, Amber? We are. We are raiding Distal's Place. They are doing a homebrew campaign with a Sword Coast, it looks like. All right, excellent. So we'll go in on that right. And thank you so much for joining us. And we hope to see you back here next every other Friday. How do I do this? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> How do we do this? Again?